Welcome to Utah. We are in the Wasatch Mountain Range where today we will be dissecting the Fazari Temp Peak. Come along for a ride while we talk to Fazari employees, learn about this 170 mil 29 inch wheeled e-bike that can also be mullet compatible and all of you custom frame building e-bike fans are going to be really excited to find out what Fazari is doing with this thing. Come along, let's go for a ride and learn about the Temp Peak. My name is Tyler Cloward. Uh, I work on the product team here at Fazari Bikes. My name's Ryan. Uh, I work at Fazari in the marketing department. Hey, I'm Ty with Fazari. I work on our product development team. I'm one of the product managers there and did a bunch of development on Temp and so I'm excited to show it to you guys today. Yeah, this is the new Temp Peak. We're really, really excited about that one. This is our first uh, enduro e-bike, full carbon frame. Um, and as you can see, we're here, here in American Fort Canyon, like Drew said, uh, this is Mount Timpanogos. Our office is just on the other side of this. Um, and the uh, riding up here is amazing. So it's all moto legal, e-bikes are amazing up here. And that's, we did a lot of testing. That's why the name, you know, came, came from this mountain and these trails up here, the Tempe. And now several months ago, we had you out on our home turf, ex home turf, I guess. <laughs> and we did a very fun dissected on the new LaSalle Peak. Yeah. And while we were there filming that video, Tyler was hinting about this new bike coming and how much we were going to like it. Um, so any parallels between that LaSalle Peak and the Tim Pink? Tell us about this thing. Yeah, so LaSalle Peak's a you know, 170 rear travel, 170 front travel uh, enduro race bike, but all day pedal machine as well. And so we took a lot of the cues from that into the Tim Peak. It's actually almost identical in geometry and kinematics. Um, you know, it's coming in with a 64 degree head to angle. 77 and a half seat tube, but that's that's effective seat tube angle on every size. So we actually changed the actual seat tube angle. So at each given saddle height, it really is a 77 and a half degree seat tube angle. Okay. Uh, 437 stays, so it's, it's right on with that LaSalle Peak. So that shorter chain stay we found in the e-bikes keeps the bike really lively. We're, we're adding a little more weight with the battery motor system. That sh shorter chain stay allows us to make those corners a little bit quicker. Okay. And uh, I'm on a size large here, reach yes. is? 45. 45, yeah. okay. And how big are the jumps roughly between, are they pretty standard? Yeah, about an inch, 25 millimeters okay. um, across each side roughly uh, all the way through. So four sizes from a small to an extra large. Okay. Um, we wanted to make sure that's, you know, we're, we're hitting those jumps as, as, as is getting water bottles on each side, just all those little features you'd kind of come to expect in a, in a modern modern enduro bike. But then we're, you know, with the e-package, you know, as we get into designing bikes, especially e-bikes, um, we wanted to make sure we're building a mountain bike first. You know, we want to make sure handling is huge for us. We want to make sure that uh, the cornering, the descending, the climbing, all those positions are going to work. The kinematics are working. And then we add the motor to that versus vice versa of like, okay, we have a motor and battery. Let's you know, let's let's come up with some geometry that fits around that packaging system. Mm -hmm. Is it's really bike first? It's suspension kinematics, it's geometry, and we work really hard to package that whole motor and battery system all together in one to get a bike that's really going to ride well. Awesome. Yeah. Now, comparing this bike to the Wire Peak, yes. Uh, let's talk about the biggest differences, I guess, from a feature standpoint as well okay. as an on-trail standpoint. Yeah. So, kind of features and stuff. Um, I mean, we've been over kind of geometry. Um, so, more travel. That's biggest feature. 170 rear, one, um, 170 millimeters in front. It can also be run um, with a dual crown fork. So, it's dual crown compatible. Um, if you want to do. I don't know, crazy shuttle runs or something on this. Right. That's something that the wire doesn't feature. Um, and then bigger battery. So while still keeping the weight low, that's kind of one of the big ones. So looking at kind of our modular rail system, um, the battery mounts into this frame different than the wire peak. Okay. Bigger battery is kind of a big one. We also look at motor tunes a little bit on this. So carbon carbon frame on this um, with, our, with our motor tuning and stuff, knowing that this is a bigger bike, um, you're doing a little bit steeper climb and stuff. We've actually brought down the start power just a little bit over wire peak. When you're starting on those really, really steep climbs, those first two pedal strokes are key. And if you're spinning out that rear wheel, yep. we brought the motor tune down just a little bit compared to wire um, to kind of help preserve that startup without spinning out. No way. 
with uh, with us both making it up the easy route now we gotta go that one. is that now we have to try the hard route. You got this! Oh, oh stick with my it! Stick with it! Oh. Wow! Oh, no. oh. <laughs> oh they scream like a little girl. Oh, and manuals out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> there's obviously, with an increase in travel, there's an increase in, I guess, the aggression and the intent of the rider on these bikes. Um, you know, what, what can we expect from rear end stiffness, link stiffness? I'm looking at a pretty big and beefy headset in here. Yes. What are the changes made there? Yes. So first and foremost, just going to the carbon fiber frame, we're able to get, you know, 30, 40% increased stiffness in the front triangle. Chain stays, if you look at them, really, really thick on the chain stays and the seat stays, full carbon fiber on the link. Um, and we're kind of, it's kind of how we connect everything too. So pivot hardware plays significantly into stiffness while maintaining really, really good tire clearance on this, so. Is hardware increased in size uh, compared to your analog bikes, or say like the LaSalle Peak, which is a very similar yes. bike? This is very similar to LaSalle Peak in terms of hardware and things. Um, a few kind of like key points, for example, this bolt right here, instead of being aluminum like all the others, we found that if we make that one stainless steel, we get increased rigidity between the link and the chainstay. So kind of material properties as well are kind of key on this. So that's kind of one I would I'd point out in particular. Um, but everything else is kind of tried and true Fazari tech okay. in terms of links and pivots and stuff. But that's that's kind of one key detail in terms of stiffness. Cool. And so, the big headset. One and yes, a half. big headset. So yep, one and a half, one and a half top and bottom. Um, there's some cool benefits with that. Um, number one is like angle adjust and reach adjust headsets. So stock will just have kind of stock headsets here. But if you wanted to play around with reach and angle adjust headsets, um, that having the ZS56 top cap gives you a little bit more maneuverability and play with there. Um, it also just helps with overall stiffness. Right. If, when you put bigger bearings in there, yeah. you get increased stiffness. So. Um, so how would you describe the feel out of this rear end for people? Uh, it's, it's, it's a progressive design. We, we want that on purpose. We want to make sure that, you know, it's nice and supple off the top. So it's a higher ratio at the beginning, meaning that rear wheel is going to move a little more in the shock. So we want, we want that suspension active, but as you dive through that travel, uh, that mid stroke gets a little more progressive. So there's a little support there. And then at the end, it really kind of pushes back. So, I mean, send this bike. I mean, it's, it's meant to be ridden hard. I and mean, we've been jumping it in big drops and things like that. So it is that progressive design, you know, but with the suspension design, we still have to make sure everything's going to pedal properly, uh, braking performance, um, you know, so with uh, the e-bike too, you have a little bit, of, you have some assist. Um, and so we really kind of skewed making sure the braking performance was up there uh, because pedaling efficiency and braking performance are actually, they're opposites, right? So you optimize one and, and one might change a little bit. Right. So we wanted to make sure everything was going to work really well uh, and have it really balanced all the way through. So we'll have three models available, Comp, Elite, and Pro. We'll start at 6,500 for the Comp, 7,500 for the Elite, 8,500 for the Pro. Okay. Um, and then there's options for carbon wheel upgrades, frame protector kits, cush core installation. You know, that's one thing we really love on okay. the e-bikes. So. Yeah, and I mean, that's something that's a really cool feature that you guys do is allowing people to have, was that the 23 point fit in uh, yes. survey or what do you guys call that? The 23 point yeah. custom setup. Custom setup, yeah, so. that's cool. So people can opt to upgrade, yes. have cush core, cut bars down, change stem length, all that exactly, kind of stuff. Exactly, exactly. So we really, we really, you know, that is our pride and joy, the 23 point custom setup, to make sure that riders that have never seen the bike get a bike that's perfectly fit. First impressions of the bike. Again, with all our dissecteds, this is not a long-term review. Um, we've, you know, only got two days of riding on this bike, but so far, so good. Uh, it definitely took a bit of time for me to get the rock shock stuff dialed in then when you combine that with some completely foreign trails um, again it's not always the best combination for us to give an official word which is why these are just dissected videos and not long-term reviews but that being said 
I like the geometry. I see a lot of promise in the suspension platform, the bike overall as a whole. Um, I think the integration of the electronics is nice. It functions, rides, looks, and feels pretty dang nicely overall. That beefy one and a half inch head tube up front is definitely stiff. I mean, this is a, it is past DH certifications for a front triangle, so it's stiff, um, but it's also still pretty comfortable out back, which is nice, has relatively short chain stays, so um, it really has done a good job so far, especially for someone who's riding new trails he's never been on before, coming into corners late or offline. I'm able to navigate and move this bike where I want it. Um, it's still pretty poppy and playful, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting one back home on our home trails, spend a lot more time getting it dialed in and put miles in for our long-term review. So thank you guys very much for watching. Have any questions, make sure you ask down below and we will respond to anything we can or pass it along to the team at Fazari. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for lots more fun videos. Thank you and we'll see you out on the trails.